let's pick up with the definition and properties of the average molar mass for each element. The average molar mass of one mole of an element, and that's where we'll start by writing, the average molar mass of one mole of an element is averaged over all naturally occurring isotopes. And what this means is, and referencing the last example of carbon, there are two stable isotopes. Those are the two isotopes of carbon, carbon-12 and carbon-13, that if you were to get a sample of carbon in nature, so carbon in the wood in a tree or carbon in the sugar that you put in your coffee, that uh, 98, approximately 98% 98 of them would be carbon-12, and the other 2% would be carbon-13, and you would get an average of those two. And so you, uh, the, uh, this will be the mass of one mole of an element obtained in the lab or in real life. So the mass of one mole of an element obtained in the lab or in real life. So all of the naturally occurring isotopes, you just happen to get the average of all of them. And three, the average molar mass is the number written under the chemical symbol for each element on the periodic table. So the number under the chemical symbol on the periodic table. So for for example, we've already talked about carbon. Now let's talk about, oh, I don't know, nickel. Nickel, it's box on the periodic table, has Ni for the chemical symbol. It has 28 on the top, and it has 58.69 on the bottom. So we've already talked about the top number. That's the number of protons also called the atomic number. Now what we're saying is this number on the bottom is the average molar mass for nickel. And we've already talked in lecture outline one about calculations involving the molar mass. And uh, what we didn't talk about till now is that these numbers come from averaging over all of the available isotopes of nickel that are found naturally. So you don't have to think about it. All you have to do is use this number right here, and it accounts for all of the different isotopes. And in fact, different uh, elements have different numbers of naturally occurring isotopes. Fun to think about, but when you're doing a calculation, you don't have to think about it. So 58.69, is going to be for one mole of nickel what you really get, and you don't even have to think about what isotopes there are. Okay. Cool. Now, uh, one of the problems on the homework asks you to look at isotopes of an element, and uh, we're gonna look at the isotopes of magnesium. Uh, for magnesium, if we look on the periodic table, we can get the number of protons, and P superscript plus is one, another way of referring to the number of protons, since protons are positively charged. 
If we look at magnesium's box on the periodic table, we can see that the number on top is 12, which means there are 12 protons for all of these. The number of neutrons, where another way of doing neutrons is N superscript zero for no charge, is going to be mass number minus number of protons, so 12 for the first one, 13 and 14 neutrons. And we didn't talk about this before, but when you look at the mass in grams per mole of each of these isotopes, you can see that the mass number and the molar mass actual in grams per mole are very close to each other. So 25.983 versus 26. Okay, so the isotopes of magnesium, we've got them right here. What we need to do is find the average molar mass. And I'm gonna write this kind of tiny over here because it's gonna be a long formula. Uh, and I'll write the, I guess I'll write the general formula. No, I'm just gonna plug it in. It's going to be um, each of the percents turned into a fraction. So if it's 78.99% as the percent, then its fraction will be 0 0.7899. Just move the decimal point two places times the molar mass of magnesium 24. So 0 0.7899, which is a fraction, times 23.985 grams per mole. And you're gonna do the same thing for magnesium 25 and the same thing for magnesium 26. And I'm gonna leave out my units this time which pains me, but it will leave me enough space on the page. Okay, so, and then I have to, oh, I'm done. So that's all I need to do is then, is now do the math, of course. Uh, let's see, will that fit up there? Oh no, it's good. So math for this, 0. 0.7899 times 23.985 plus 0.1 times 24.986 plus 0 0.1101 times 25.983. And I get an average molar mass of all these equal to 24.305, which is very close to the number on the periodic table, 24.30. And in fact, I'm not exactly sure why it says 24.305. Um, hmm. Well, uh, I, I'm gonna write that this number should be the exact number on periodic table. Or I'm gonna use P, PT as the abbreviation for periodic table. And this is grams per mole. There must be something weird with the rounding here because it really should be 24.30 and round to zero in that second decimal place. So I'm not sure what's going on there. But the uh, <laughs> take home message is supposed to be that this process of averaging over all naturally occurring isotopes with their percentages must give us the exact number on the periodic table. And on the homework, when there's a question about this, you do have to show your work because otherwise this calculation always works out to the numbers on the periodic table and you've already got those. So please show your work for this problem. Uh, let's see. One more thing to say about this. So this is what's called a weighted average because you're taking each of these isotopes and weighting them by their percent in which they naturally occur or their fraction by which they naturally occur. So, and weighted averages are something that you see from time to time in chemistry and science in general. So, uh, and that's why for ca carbon, it's weighted 98% or 0 0.98 fraction towards carbon 12. And the average molar mass for carbon 12 is much closer to 12 than 13.
Here's a companion problem in which you do a similar thing for boron and um, the key to this one is that there are only two isotopes. One of them is 19.91% and the other one has to be 100% minus this because, uh, uh, oh, calculate the molar mass of boron 11 based on the average molar mass of boron. So you know the average molar mass of boron from the periodic table. And you can basically back calculate one of your percent, your one of your grams per mole. So it's a little different, but it's the same formula. And this formula, by the way, is, yes, on your periodic table, so, or sorry, on your conversion equation sheet right here on uh, page one.